Hey guys, I'm Davey. Uh, I help out here with worship at North Hills. I um, wanted to read a verse to you guys real quick. Um, it's from Hebrews 12. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Guys, there's things in all of our lives that are hard. We're all sinners. God's working on us. He's working out a masterpiece. So let's stand and let's stand and sing.
Sweet. A live student ministry. How are we doing? Wonderful. This is a packed room, so I'm going to do this really quick, and then we're, we're going to get out. Hey, uh, Joshua, will you come join me? Because you're going to do the, the offering at the end. But I have a few announcements I want to make sure that we are all aware of uh, before we, we split up. Announcement number one is Wednesday morning Bible study is starting back. Uh, but Wednesday morning Bible study is just for high school. Middle school, you'll get there one day. Don't rush it. Uh, underclassmen, we meet at Maverick Biscuit. Um, and then upperclassmen, you guys are at the Chick-fil-A uh, right across the street from Maverick Biscuit. Seniors, you've already started, haven't you? Yeah, you're just, you're better than all of us. You've already started. Way to go, Joseph. Uh, so Wednesday morning Bible study is back. We'll start not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, the 21st, I think is what it is. 21st, yeah. So Wednesday morning Bible study, we'll be back on the 21st. Number two, uh, we have a save the date for you. Uh, for our winter retreat, and uh, it's, it's not on here. I didn't put it. Why do, are, it's in February. I know that much. Uh, check our social media later, huh? February 10th? Sarah, you're wonderful. Thank you. Sarah, you, you too. Both Sarahs. Way to go. February 10th is our winter retreat. It's middle school and high school and uh, we're going to start opening registration here in the next week or so. And when we do that, we will let you know. But we wanted to kind of give you that save the date. Uh, we put it in the parent email, so your parents should know that as well. But we're excited to have another year of doing a winter retreat. Are you guys, I'm ready for cold weather. I don't know about you guys. I'm ready. Man, college football's back. Playoff baseball's almost here. No one likes basketball. I'm sorry. Just kidding. I like basketball. Uh, next announcement is I need one or two of you, not you, to help with, just kidding, to help with our check-in team. So uh, Kate Poost, I just talked with you. You seemed like you were kind of interested. Uh, if you're also here and you want to be a part of our check-in team, after you get dismissed from life groups, come and talk to me. And we always need some people to help. Uh, our check-in team. So if you're here and you want to help with that, let me know. Last announcement is t-shirt sign-up. Is anyone wearing our Deeper Weekend t-shirts from this last week? Will you just stand up real quick and show everyone your Deeper Weekend shirt? Let's give it up for all the Deeper Weekend people. Way to go. If you want to sign up to get a t-shirt, uh, Gabby has uh, put sign-ups outside in the... You can sit down. Bless your heart. Sorry. <laughs> Forgot the prompt them to sit down. Yeah. Yeah, good. Oh, oh, yeah. I like that. Okay, did you guys hear that? So go to Gabby's picture out on the leadership board uh, and get her email address. If you want a shirt, we're about to reorder new shirts, and we'll make sure to put your, your shirt and size in there. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Gabby. You didn't? That's heartbreaking. A little seventh grader just looked at me and goes, I never got a shirt at Deeper Weekend. <laughs> well, welcome to Alive. I'm really sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll make it right, though. Actually, I might have an extra large. You look like you're an extra large. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll work. All right. Uh, any questions with the announcements we just covered? We good? We should be good. Yeah? Yes, ma'am? The one you're wearing. Yeah, Deeper Weekend shirts. I love middle school so much. They're the best. Okay, uh, let's give it up for my friend, your friend, Josh McCarnan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, William. I barely know you, but I'm glad you have a name tag. Um, <laughs> okay, so this semester, um, we, like, and we've been doing this in the past, but there is a donation uh, kiosk. Yep. They're like the ladies on Price is Right. They're like, yeah, look at this. Okay, there's a donation kiosk over here, and there's one over here, and there's a Venmo thing up there. Now, I, do I have to use this? It's, okay. okay, here's the deal. Have you guys ever thought about how far away Israel is from here? Ooh, about 3,000 miles. I don't know. I don't have my Google Maps up. 
it's a long way. Right. Now think about this. Jesus said, I am going to send you out, and you're going to take my message of the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. Now think about this. uttermost part of the world. Isn't it? We're not close at all. Yet God in his good providence has directed his gospel to reach us. You guys sang a song tonight that was written 20 years ago. It's so old. But it's good. I am older than that. You are not wrong. Now, get this through your head. This semester And we're going to be giving money, not because it's cool and we want to write a check, but because we want to participate in what God is doing to accomplish his will in the world. There are parts of Traveler's Rest that do not know Jesus. And you guys worship at these places over there that have it. And we want to participate in that. So as we collect funds this semester, and we want to do a great job of that, really amazing. The furtherance of God's kingdom and the glory of God in the gospel. So I say that because I want you to see how big your dollars are. They might feel like a dollar. They might feel like a dime. They might not feel like that much. But these men long ago gave their lives, they gave their resources, and you and I need to do the same thing. That's my challenge. There's kiosk in the corner. You can visit tonight on your way out. You can take a picture on your way out. Be like, my mom sent me a thousand dollars last week. You know. Check with your grandparents. They have monies, and you're like, Grandma, I need a bunch of money to get the trail park open. God bless you. Why me? That's fine. <laughs> and you know what I'll do? I'll tell you, Grandma. Get them going too. <laughs> It'll be fine. But I want you guys to see the big picture of what we're accomplishing here. It's not like we just need your loose change. Go raise your mom's car. We are accomplishing something for God's glory and the furtherance of his gospel. Okay? Thank you. That was, that was really good. That was good. So I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll, yes. Oh, yeah, someone lost money, and I have it in my pocket. And if you can come to me and tell me how much money... I might believe you. I might. But I know this youth group, and y'all are a bunch of liars when it comes to money. After we just heard about, actually, I'm putting it in Trailside Offering. There you go. Thank you. You didn't really lose it. All right. Jesus found it. And that much. Sorry. All right. I'm sorry. All right. I love you guys a lot. Because before I could give the punchline, like four kids said it before I could even say it. All right. I'm going to pray for us. And then uh, middle school. 7th and 8th grade, you will be over there with my man Josh, and then ninth through 12th grade high school, you're going to stay in here with me, so pray with me. God, I'm so grateful for this room full of so many people and so many people I love. God, I, I just feel so blessed in this moment to gather with them, just to learn more about you, to worship you, um, to gather under the banner of Jesus to celebrate his life his burial, and his resurrection. So God, I pray that tonight is a helpful night in helping us find and follow you. God, I pray that tonight we take one more step in growing closer together as life groups. And, and we're going to talk about tonight, what, what does it mean to have a fresh start with our life groups? As we have a brand new school year, Lord, what does it look like to take advantage of the community that you have surrounded us with? So, Lord, we commit this time to you. We love you, even as we go into this quick break. Um, God, I pray uh, for all. We have so many first-time guests here tonight. Lord, I pray that you would make alive um, their home and that these people around them would become soon friends. And so we love you. We commit this time to you. God, thank you for all my adult leaders in this room who are committed to shepherding the next generation. We love you, King Jesus. All praise, glory, and honor to you. And all God's people said, amen. Let's take a two-minute break.
please. And Sarah Ware, can you get my table? Thank you. Blacked out. Hey, don't you blow out the Holy Spirit. It represents the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, John, you're smart. Help them. Yeah, be good. All right. Hey, I need you guys. Shh. I need you guys to help me with something. Who here has like really good taste buds. Like, you know when you're eating something, you know what you're eating. I believe that. I do believe that. Yeah, I believe that. Thank you. Can everyone say, thanks, Sarah. Okay. Hey, Chick-fil-A, what's your name? I knew that. Miriam, come here. I want you to do this. Everyone give it up for Miriam. Let's move it this way. Okay, Miriam. Uh, and I want, I want one more person. Bron Bron? Bron Bron. Come on, Bronny. Yeah, let's give it up for Bron Bron. Oh, yeah? All right. Like the battle of Chick-fil-A. Okay, here's what we're going to do is a little exercise together that I think will help bring our attention to the scriptures and kind of bring some attention to something really important that I want to talk to you about. But, uh, okay, uh, you'll notice right here uh, that we got something that will be at the banqueting table in heaven one day. You guys know what this is. These are Oreos, right? And all God's people said, amen. amen. There's crack cocaine in these. They're very addicting. But, but also, who here has ever been to Walmart and seen the twist and shouts? Raise your hand if you got no shame. Like, you'll slam an Oreo or a twist and shout. It doesn't matter. Raise your hand if you truly believe that this is of the devil. And an Oreo should not, there should not be a fake Oreo. Mia, all right, you're with me. Mia, I texted you and you didn't text me back. That hurt my feelings. You can't come on my, actually, wait a second. I had another, I had another announcement that I was supposed to give without middle school in the room. Uh, FYI, in October, I am doing a Liberty University trip to whoever wants to go with me to, thank you, the one flamer. We are the flames. So it's weird if you call, anyways, uh, if, thank you, George. If you are interested in visiting Liberty University with me in October, uh, come and talk to me. And like uh, Ashton Dyer just graduated from here and went to Liberty. Cade Greeley just graduated from here. He's up there. Your sister, Caroline, you're not coming. Uh, but uh, I'm just kidding. But if you're, oh, Sarah Williams, you graduated from there. Go Flames. All right, so uh, I'm doing a college trip to Lynchburg, Virginia. If you want to come, come and talk to me. Mia, thanks for reminding me about that. Yes, ma'am. October 20th and 21st. Come and talk to me, and we can talk about cost. Yeah, because it, it'll vary. Yeah. Hannah, what, Hannah? Yeah, for those in our youth group. Thanks for asking that question. Okay, anyways, we got Oreos. Uh, we also got Cheez-Its. Any Cheez-Its fans in here? It's so good. But then, but then we also have cheddar cheese crackers. Great value, right? Was anyone here raised or currently being raised redneck? That was me. Like, this is what we would have had right here. All right, now this one's really good. Where are my Nutella fans? Yeah. But who here also likes hazelnut spread? What? 
You think they're the same thing? Well, we'll figure out. All right, I, Coca-Cola. We got Coca-Cola fans. Or Sam's Cola. Sam's Cola. So what we're going to do is uh, I, I found these in our closet. They're goggles that at one point we blacked out right here. Can you see without those on? Well, it doesn't matter because we just need your taste buds. Yeah, so take those nice glasses off and put your goggles on <laughs> and say my pleasure because you work at Chick-fil-A. All right, anyways, uh, come over here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a twist and shout in one hand, and then I'm going <laughs> to twist and shout. It's just weird. Uh, and then I'm going to put the real deal, and I just want to tell... We just want to see if you can tell the difference. All right, so come and stand right here. You don't have to put the goggles on if you don't want to. Mom, they blindfolded me. And... All right, close your eyes. I don't want to go back. Shh, are you a diabetic? Yes. What? Hey, Jeevan, what does that mean? She says she's, a, what'd you say? Type 1 diabetic. Can she have Oreos? Oh, f no, for real. I. You can? Okay. All right. Close your eyes. All right. Everyone look at me. All right. Open your right hand. Okay. And then in the other hand, I'll put another cookie and see if you can tell which one is the Oreo versus the twist and shout. No, by eating it. <laughs> She bit it. All right. Now, let me see this one. Okay. All right. Take a bite of that. This one right here. Yeah. Shh. Whatever you need to. Oh. All right. Atta girl. All right. Now, was this one the Oreo or was that one the Oreo? That one? You got it. Nice. Well done. Okay. Hey, you win a box of twist and shouts. There you go. I love it. You can have a seat. Let's give it up. You said it. Let's give it up for our Oreo taste tester who nailed it. All right, Bron Bron. Uh, you guys want them to try the Cheez Its or Nutella? <laughs> Nutella, Cheez Its. Okay. Let's do Nutella. All right, now, Bron, first off, I love the jacket. Looking good. All right, look that way. Um, hey, can I get some help? John, will you do a heaping spoonful? of that type of stuff. Bron, we're going to see if you can tell the difference between Nutella or hazelnut spread. Okay, now, Bron, Bron, keep your eyes shut. John is going to feed you some Nutella or fake Nutella. Crap. What? Okay, okay. All right, Bron, Bron. Open up, sweetheart. You're so much. All right. Got a pretty good feel for it? Open up. Here comes another bite. It's what? It is soggy. Soggy? Well, it is. <laughs> All right. And here comes another spoonful of something. Open up, Bron Bron. Nice and wide. All right. There we go. All right, now, was the first, look up, you look like you're dying. Look up and face the crowd. It's chocolate for crying out loud. He would be allergic. Bron, Bron, this, no, you don't need a napkin. All right, was the first spoonful the real Nutella or the second one? It was the second one. It was the second one. You can tell. Do we have time for one more? Yeah, we can do one more. All right, this one's the hardest one, I think. Uh... Come on, Shalay. Come on up. Uh, oh, yeah. You win Nutella. Here, you can have fake Nutella. There you go. Welcome to Alive. All right, stand right there. All right. We got Cheez-Its. All right. Close your eyes. And close your eyes and look the other way. All right. Now, we're going to tell, uh, see if you can tell the difference between these crackers. Okay. So, um, open up your right hand. That's your left. Thank you. All right. 
Now open up your left hand. All right, and I want you to take a bite of your left hand first. Very quiet chewer. That's very good. All right. Do this quickly. <laughs> All right, and I'll take a bite of the other hand. And tell us which one you think is the real deal in the cheese it cracker. The one you just ate? Wow, you got it. Well done. You don't want the other ones? Here. Oh, yep, you win Cheez Its. Well done. Who wants a box of. Okay. All right. Will, sweetheart? You got it, bro. You got it. Okay. And then, uh, hey, Avery, you want some Oreos? Share with your friends. Make some friends over there. You're welcome. And then, who here wants some delicious Sam's Cola? There you go. You can have it. And then, Springwell, you can have Coca Cola. There you go. Right there. All right. So, the reason why we just wasted eight minutes of your life doing that, oh, we'll talk about, we're, we're going to talk about this peanut butter and jelly in just a second. But, what comes to mind when you think of a knockoff? And that's a rhetorical question. What comes, rhetorical means like just think in your head. Yeah, like I want you guys to think through Kendra, hurt people, hurt people. <laughs> there you go, sweetheart. Okay. I want you to think what comes to your mind when you think of a knockoff. Like there's, I believe there's some things that should never be generic. And so when I went to Walmart with my kids, I thought Oreos. Like if I go to a party and you have twist and shouts, <laughs> I'm kind of secretly judging you. Right? Or if I go somewhere and you don't really have real Nutella and it's hazelnut spread, deep down I'm like, I need new friends. Like I'm trying to figure out what is going on here. And honestly, no, no one likes a knockoff and here's why. They don't taste right, they don't look right, they don't work right. And it's interesting that you can tell, even in a taste test, everyone was able to test or taste what was the real deal versus Generic, and so I actually have two pictures of my favorite knockoffs I've ever seen. Uh, the first one is a skirple, not a sharpie, a skirple, and it's. I love that they went with pink for the for the skirple. The next one's actually my all-time favorite uh, knockoff, and that is the Ninja Tortoise. Okay, no joke. I was at a dollar store with my kids. I'm just kidding. I found that on Google. But, like, that's not the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We all know the real Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And if you see a knockoff, you just know. And I love that the box is Michelangelo, but the toy is Leonardo. I couldn't even, I couldn't even get that right. But here's the deal. My main point and bottom line for, for doing all of this is sim simply this. And I'm going to kind of transition more like using the lens of like a spiritual focus after going through all that. It's if you are going to be a follower of Jesus, we don't need to be a knockoff and we don't need to be a fake because the world will know. The world will know. What I'm trying to get you guys to look through the lens of tonight, Jesus is calling you to be the real deal. He's given us passages of scripture that tells us what is the real deal versus what is the generic and what is the, the fake, okay? So I love that if some of you are familiar with the gospels, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John coming out of the gospels. We know that the book of Acts is all about the birth of the church, the birth of the church. And one of the things that we see um, in Acts after Pentecost uh, Pentecost was this huge awakening, a movement of the Holy Spirit, right? We know that Jesus ascended into heaven. When Jesus ascended into heaven, we know that his Holy Spirit came to us to, to live inside of us, to be our helper. And Jesus said, I'm leaving with you my Holy Spirit until one day we know that Jesus comes back in 
Revelation. We read all about that in the rapture. But here's the main thing that you see with the church in Acts. It's that they did life together. The church did life together. And so we have passage after passage, scripture after scripture about how the church, when it was being birthed in Acts, one of the defining characteristics that we see is that they did life together. So um, if you're a note taker, write this down. I am going to have some slides in just a second, but the main theme for tonight is doing life together. Why do we do life groups? What does God's word have to say with that type of biblical community? But in my own personal experience, can I tell you something to be true about most church followers that I've been around? Um, and I've, I grew up in church. I've worked in the church for a really long time. One truth that I feel has been an absolute truth in my time in the church is the most authentic Christians are Christians who do life together. Most authentic Christians are Christians who do life together. Here's the deal. We need each other. We, we need each other. And so that's why I have this peanut butter, which my favorite is Jif, right? How many Jif fans right here? Kendra, I can tell you do not like peanut butter from that constipated look on your face. And then jelly. Got any Smuckers fans? Yep, Smuckers. So... Here's what I mean when I say we need life together. Because some of us in this room, we're peanut butter. Some of us in this room are jelly. And I'm going to get to this in just a second. If you're a note taker, write this down. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 says this. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. We are all members of God's family. No matter what background we have, even if our stories are different, even if we come from different cultures, different families, and different backgrounds, we, one thing that we all have in common is we are all in God's family. So point number one that I want you guys to talk about in Life Group, and you can throw this up on the screen, um, is effective Christians are connected Christians. Effective Christians are connected Christians. Here's what I'm not saying. If you're a Christian who is not connected, then you're not a real Christian at all. That, I'm not saying that, okay? But what I am saying is effective Christians are connective, connected Christians. And here's what I kind of mean by that. Effective, connected terms would be Christians who have gotten off the sidelines and gotten in the game. Can I tell you something that frustrates me to no end? And I've been in, I've been in leadership in this church for well over a decade. Kind of a soapbox are just followers of Jesus who do claim North Hills as their church, but they show up for an hour and a half service. Then when they're done, they go home. That's it. Like, they're going to church, they're followers of Jesus, but they're not necessarily connecting with the people of God. The joke in, in, in our family is that's the way my wife would prefer it and really likes it. Like, it's get in and get out. And if I don't have to see these people Monday through Saturday, I'm good with that. I'm always pushing my wife like, no, we are connected Christians. We need to have these people over. Rachel's like, oh, I don't really want to. I go, I get it, honey. I get it. Because they're peanut butter and we're jelly. Now, here's what I mean by that. When I say we need each other, I don't know about you, but the best combination I know on planet Earth is a delicious peanut butter and jelly. Les and I just went somewhere where they had fried peanut butter and jellies. Dude, and you're wondering why I need some chiseling too right in here? It's the fried peanut butter and jellies. Here's the deal. Peanut butter just peanut butter, that's an okay sandwich, but when you combine it with jelly, we've got something here. Just stay with me. Listen to me. Where I want to encourage you guys is some of you are peanut butter and you hate being around jelly, but God is saying when you are combined, when you are together, when you are connected, it's a beautiful combination. We are better together. 
Listen to me. We're better together. I would rather be with people who are just like peanut butter. Sometimes I don't like getting to know people who are like jelly because they're nothing like me. They don't talk like me. They don't think like me. They don't act like me. And I don't like being around them. Jelly people probably look at peanut butter and go, annoying, loud, distracting, narcissistic, obnoxious. Don't like being with peanut butter. PLR, I'm not talking about you, though, okay? (laughs) Okay, when I was saying that, she was like, (laughs) like that. But together, it's beautiful. Here's what I'm calling you to. Effective Christians are connected Christians. One of the things I want you guys to grasp in your time in this youth group is get off the sidelines and get in the game. Get off the sidelines, get in the game. Like if you're just showing up to church, punching your card, you're not really connecting with God's people, there's not something bigger than just the corporate gathering, I just don't feel like you're gonna be as effective Christian as God is calling you to be. Does that make sense? I'm not questioning your salvation. That's not not what I'm saying at all. But sometimes the best combos are total opposites. In your life group, there are going to be people who are total opposites of you. And don't run away from it. Uh, A couple sad realities that I have coming out of high school is I have the privilege of doing ministry in the town I grew up in. Not a lot of people kind of have my story. My same best friends I met in kindergarten. Um, We get breakfast together at Cracker Barrel off of Woodruff Road every Thursday morning. And every Thursday morning, I leave thinking, I need new friends. <laughs> they drive, drive me absolutely crazy, but I love them. And then I complain about it to my wife, and she's like, I need new friends. I'm like, I know, but I'm stuck with them. I don't know what to do. But here's the deal. I will bump into people all around Greenville that I thought was such a loser. I didn't like them. I made fun of them. I purposely didn't want to be around them. But now as adults, we cross paths. And let me tell you something. They are some of the best people that I've, I've, I've had the privilege of grabbing lunch with or bumping into at Walmart or wherever. And I normally leave thinking, I really missed out in high school. I wish I could have gotten to know that person. But all I was worried about is being around what I liked, being around people who were just like me. And I didn't realize what I was missing out on because the combo of the total opposites is a beautiful thing. So I want to encourage you. You might have people in your life group that you don't want to connect with, and I'm challenging you to take me up on this challenge to connect with them, and I promise you, you won't, you won't regret it. So the main reasons why, as we have this fresh start into the school year, the main reasons that we do life together, and this is my next slide, doing life together makes it easier in following Jesus. Your life group is a tool to make it easier in your walk with Jesus. As you find and follow Jesus, listen to me, you cannot do that alone. Jesus did not intend for you to be a silo Christian. Jesus didn't intend for you to keep all of your dark secrets and everything just kind of deep in here, and you don't share it with anyone else. Let me tell you a sad reality, not only a sad reality of Tim, in not connecting with certain people in high school that I truly regret. I will say this is very true in what I've noticed in church world. The first step away from God is a step away from his people. Normally a red flag, a warning sign that I know that the check engine light is coming on, the first step, a purposeful first step away from God, generally, not always, but generally is a step away from his people. I can't tell you how many followers of Jesus I've met in Greenville and I go, hey, what body of believers do you belong to? Oh, we don't go to church. Oh, okay. Again, not questioning their salvation. Hey, tell me about some of the relationships you have with other followers of Jesus. I don't really have any. I just think, that is so, that's so hard. I think of the relationships I have in my life of people who love Jesus, and it makes it easier to follow Jesus because here's the deal. Following Jesus is not easy. It's hard. As that video alluded to, it's the chisel and the hammer. Like, it's hard in following Jesus. We need each other. 
I know some of you guys hate going to life groups, but you need it. If, I, if we didn't think life groups were important, we'd get rid of them. But I look back on my time in following Jesus and realize, wow, it made it so much easier. Uh, note takers, write this down. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 through 10. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Let God's word sink in to you. If someone who falls alone, they're in real trouble. Joe, I, you don't need to share, but as like everything you've been going through with Nadine, how vital have the people of God been in your life? So Ecclesiastes ends saying, for those who fall or go through hard times are in real trouble. Joe, do you feel like you guys would have been in real trouble to go through that alone? Yeah. Following Jesus on your own is impossible. The more people that you have in your life who fear the Lord speaking into you, the better off you will be. Listen to me. The more people that love Jesus speaking into you, the better off you will be. It will lead to bearing much fruit and not just one type of fruit. So you need more people. So this is my, my next slide, is wise choices are a result of spending time with God and with people who are following after him. So effective Christians are connected Christians, but I want you to take it one step farther. Yes, connect with your life group, but I need you to be connecting with people who are just the all-stars that you see following Jesus. I think I've said this before. I'll say it again. Anytime I see Peter Hubbard, the poor guy, I'm just like his shadow. I'm like kind of touching him. I want the Peter Hubbard mojo, right? Like the dude is awesome. That's who I want to be connected to. So I would encourage you, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. As you follow Jesus, get around people who have been following Jesus for a long time. Get connected with them. Because I'm telling you, seek after people who are next level. And can I say something? The leaders, the adult leaders who come here to lead your life groups are next level. Guys, I can't tell you how many times I cannot get the people of God to get along. It's like pulling teeth. It can be really discouraging sometimes when we are not of one heart and of one mind. Our life groups are witnesses to the world. Our life groups are witnesses to Greenville County. How, how do we know that? Well, John chapter 13, verse 35, if you're a note taker, write this down. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples. Listen to that. Your love for one another, your love in this youth group, your love in your life group will prove to the world that you are my followers. So when people come to our youth group, can they tell really quick if we're Oreos or if we're twist and shouts? I'm calling you to be the real deal in your walk with Jesus. One of the ways that you can start growing in being the real deal is effective Christians are connected Christians. And not just connecting with the people you wanna connect with or the people it's easiest to connect with, I'm calling the peanut butter of Alive to connect with the jelly of Alive. And together, when opposites collide in life groups, we've got a beautiful and tasty combination. And I get it. It's hard sometimes if you're a peanut butter being around a jelly. But we've got to grow together. We have to love one another. Why? Not just so that your life can be a little bit easier. It's so we can be salt and light in Greenville. It's so we can grow together in our walk. So in conclusion, um, I've got a few things that I want you guys to talk about in life group. Number one, leaders, this will also help if you remember this, but if you're a student, instead of just staring at me, get on your phone and like 
type it out or something so you'll remember. Number one, who is the peanut butter or the jelly that you need to pursue this year to life? Who is it? Like, I get it. When we come here, we want to be with our people. I can't tell you how many times we'll have first-time guests, and to pry peanut butter away from peanut butter is so hard. I'm like, hey, peanut butter, you're always with peanut butter. Will you just come over here and help first-time guests? And you're like, oh, fine. Like, no, like people will know that we're followers of Jesus and how we love first-time guests. And that first-time guest might be a jelly or might be someone you've known for years in this youth group. But again, who is the peanut butter or the jelly you need to pursue this year or maybe even tonight? Number two, where are you being a fake or a knockoff? Because here's the deal. The world will know if you're acting one way on Sunday and then a different way on Monday. You claim to be a follower of Jesus, but those people go, hmm, doesn't act like one or talk like one or taste like one. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Shh, taste, we're salt and light, okay? Salt, tasty. All right, but listen to me. Will people know if you are the real deal? Listen, I can tell you something. If I wanna know if you're the real deal or not, all I gotta do is talk to your parents. Because they tell me what you're like on Tuesday night, and then I know what you're like on Sunday night, and the two just don't line off or line up. You're fake. If I'm just being real, Jesus hasn't called you to be fake. So, number two, you might trick or confuse some people, but ultimately God knows. And I'm calling some of you that are twisting shouts to recognize you're a generic brand and God is calling you into so much better, into that Oreo life. And number three, where and with who do you need to spend time with this year to grow in your faith? And my next slide is, what is God wanting to chisel off and away from you? What needs the chisel as we watched in that video? So what I mean by this where and with who do you need to spend time with this year? Like, who are the all-stars you need to start pursuing? And we've got lots of them in here. Your life group leaders are people you need to pursue. If your life group leader is always pursuing you and it's not back and forth, it's a one-way relationship, I'm imploring you, effective Christians are what? Connected Christians, okay? Number four, when people come to a live, do they see Oreos or a twist and shout? So again, back to my main point, if I could get inside and look into what no one else could see, are you the real deal or a knockoff? If, if you're willing to be transparent and authentic about some of the areas that we can work on, I think that'd be beautiful. And then lastly, connected Christians connect and include all. Effective Christians are connected Christians, but then once we're connected, we connect and include all. So here's what I'm really going after. Once you're an effective uh, Christian who's connected, you're connected to grow in Jesus, but then it's about others, and it's not about you. You should be known in your school, your ball clubs. All, your reputation should be one that's trying to bring people into the realness and let them taste what you've been tasting. Taste and see that he is good. So connected Christians connect and include all. Talk about how you can do that in your, in your life group. So conclusion, and then I'll pray because I'm one minute over. The truth is the only thing good or worthy thing about us is Jesus, but we need each other. Hear me, Jesus is enough, but Jesus has still called us to be connected and we need one another to grow more into the image of Jesus by the grace of God. Connected Christians are effective Christians. You have a fresh start to get this going for the new school year. So I would say take just one point from this and slowly implement it into your walk with Jesus. Yeah? Okay, I'm gonna pray for us and then we're gonna go to groups. If you don't know where you're going, just run up here and talk to me and I will get you moving in the right direction. I love you guys, okay? I hope that this is a place where you can get connected, okay? Effective Christians are connected Christians. 
And so I want you guys to go to group and talk about ways that we can grow as a life group. But ultimately, the biggest takeaway I have for you is I want peanut butter and jelly to start connecting in this youth group. Okay? All right. God, thank you so much for what you're doing in this youth group. Lord, thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. And Lord, thank you that you have called us to be connected with other followers of Jesus. What a gift community is. What a gift friendship is. And as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And so, Lord, we're leaving here by your kindness to be sharpened, not for our own good, but for your glory, so that people will know that we're your disciples. And God, I do pray that when people hang out with us in this youth group, they will know that you reign in the throne of our hearts. God, I pray that by your kindness, you would flesh out the fake generic stuff going on in us. And would you continue to mold us into the ultimate real deal, the ultimate example, Jesus Christ. So we love you. Be with us as we go to group. And all God's people said, amen.